happy Wednesday. Good morning, PSW staff, clients and friends for our advanced class, welcome. We looked at Bach yesterday. Um, I gave you a little intro and I wanted you to pay attention to that class. The father of Western music, of Western classical music. And I was thinking about that this morning because probably most music today comes from Bach. Isn't that crazy? And we're talking about, he was born in 1685. 1685, that's two million years ago. No, but that's a long time ago. And he set up the structure. We're gonna get into more Bach because, and, but we're gonna also listen to the song from the 1960s that everyone knows too. Um, and it's not, it's not Lover's Concerto because we played that in the, you know, yesterday's class. It's another pop song, but uh, mostly all of <laughs> good music comes from Bach because he set the foundation for good bass lines inversions, which we're going to take a look at some of these terms. And I know that not everybody reads music here, so um, that's okay. You don't need to, but I do want you to listen. Everyone, everyone can listen, right? So we're going to be taking some very simple four measures, four, just four bar lines of stepward downward motion and, ta and, and think of, listen to how Bach did this and how he's one of the most, you know, iconic composers, even if you don't like his music, although it's pretty hard not to like, it's very satisfying music. I mean, how could you not like this? So expanding on counterpoint, right? Different lines of melodies that go together that create melody and harmony at the same time, right? So just one line is not counterpoint. Counterpoint is more than one line, but they're not solo lines. They help, they help support the melody by, um, by creating different lines. I mean, it, we just, we don't think about counterpoint really today because we don't need to. When, when you have a band, when Paul McCartney and the Beatles write a song together, Paul finds his own bass line. That's, I mean, he's creating counterpoint to support the melody, right? And it sometimes sounds like a solo, but it's completely to support the chord progressions. So when I say Bach was the first, I mean, he was harmonically, I mean, chord-wise, more innovative than a lot of previous composers. Uh, because this is Baroque music, right? This is the early start of Baroque music. Not that he knew, you know, he was just writing in the church, you know, along with his, you know, his brothers and cousins. Also dissonant chords, you're gonna get some dissonant chords. Not, not the uncomfortable screeching dissonant chords, but chord progressions that eh, jazz people will use hundreds of years later. Um, many harmonic possibilities that as opposed to just the whole song is in C major, that's well and good, but he'll take you on all different keys where it's not gonna sound like it's an exercise. It's, it's gonna sound like it's a beautiful, a beautiful adventure and stuff. So, um, and we know Baroque ornamentation, Baroque architecture, right? Bar Baroque music is more, uh, you know, a lot of notes, just like a lot of, you know, decorations on a, on a house or a castle. So that's, that's what it is. But you know, if you if you think of a lot of notes, it's hard to get all the right notes. Right meaning consonant, pleasant hearing notes. Um, how do you know which notes to choose? Because a lot of notes, just like it could be a mess, right? I mean, I want a lot of ornamentation on this house that I'm building. It could look like just a complete mess. So how do you know? Well, he uses good voice leading, which we'll look at in a second. So um, it's kind of like sewing machine music. Some people because you know, it's, it's semi-mechanical, but that's not all of his music. That's, you know, he wrote probably a thousand pieces or something like that. So Bach explored kind of more challenging uh, and sophisticated uh, music re rather than Vivaldi, a little bit more than Vivaldi and Handel, which are composers that we've talked about that we'll, we'll expand on later. And uh, uh, of course, he, he wasn't really appreciated in his lifetime uh, until later, until Mendelssohn. 
and Mendelssohn we did a class on and um, Mendelssohn was just like boy this guy is great but you know that was 100 years after or something like that so uh, and uh, as, of course as we know did mostly all of this work on an organ because the piano was just invented right around his time and it was still kind of like a you know but the piano gives you what it gives you volume right um, velocity an organ and a harpsichord you just get one volume sound which is great piano gives you more sensitivity and stuff so let's just uh, we've heard inversions before it's just a way that you re respell a chord so if you have a c chord c e g is the most basic chord first inversion you just respell it where it's e g c so it's the same exact notes you're just replacing the root of the note the root's always the bottom uh, you're just you're just kind of rearranging it second inversion means the fifth g is in the root at the bottom that's that's just basic so he's and what does this do this provides more color to the chord it's and it's going to be a way to, for to get into voice leading voice leading is going to be something that we're going to look at so voice leading it's a way to get from one chord to another chord because if you have a c to an a okay that's fine but how do you get there with with certain notes how, how, do, you, how do you get to the places that's what voice leading is there's right ways, there's wrong ways. Now, you know, you can just do, you know, whatever sounds good. That's kind of my, but there were very specific rules to voice leading. There weren't, I won't get into it, but you can never do parallel fifths where if it's like a C and a G, and then it's a D and an A right next to each other, you know, you'd get castrated or, you know, ostracized for that because uh, it didn't sound pleasant. So you would learn how to write because the church, you know, made all these, ridiculous i mean you know wonderful rules about this stuff so if it's a way to get from one chord to another chord voice leading um it can also be easier for musicians to play because if you're going to a c chord to an a chord how do you get there you could go from c b that's right in between to a as opposed to c and a you go to c b a that's and then that could start your bass line perhaps and if we think of c and a there's a common tone common tones are very common it means the same note right so if we have if we have a c and an a a minor chord the common note in that is c because c is also in the c chord of course and c is also in the a minor chord so that note doesn't change so that's a common tone and and this is all going to make sense when we listen to some examples Let's listen to his voice leading in the Goldberg Variations, one of his most famous pieces. This key is in the key of G, okay? And all we, we just really have to look at the first four measures. And if we just look, um, um, we'll, we'll take a quick listen and then we'll look at it. Beautiful, right? So let's go back to the first four measures. It's, this is voice leading. This is stepwise motion. It's going from the G to the F sharp to the E to the D. That's, those are all just uh, step, stepwise. There's no leaps involved. And those are inversions. Those are chords. So it's not a G chord and then it's not an F sharp chord. No, it's a G chord, but the F sharp is going to be playing uh, well, the five chord. Well, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I want you to hear that downward stepwise motion. Now, what does that have to do with music today? Because uh, you're like, okay, that's fine. It was hundreds of years ago. 
Well, one of my favorite songs, God Only Knows by the Beach Boys. Do you know that song? I may not always love you Promise there are stars above you You'll never need to doubt it I'll make you so sure about it God only knows what I'd be without you If you should ever leave me some people call that baroque pop but one of the best love songs ever written one of the best you know pop songs written in uh, of the pet sounds album um, I mean, we could just take the last four bars of the of the first verse, and Brian Wilson is going to be doing the same thing that Bach does. Whether I think he maybe he was he was aware of that because he was listening to a lot of Bach. He said when he was writing this, but um, just listen to this last the last four bars. <laughs> So from the key of E, because the song fluctuates from the key of A and E, from the key of e, uh, e, measure 17 starts on an A, and then it goes downward. It goes A, right, to G, to F sharp, to E. That's the same stepward downward motion as Bach is doing in the Goldberg, Goldberg variations. It's getting you back to the root of you're ending on the root, but through stepwise voice leading and inversions of different chords. But it's sounding beautiful, right? I mean, it, it, sounds, it sounds very um, satisfying because they're not, they're, the notes aren't leaping everywhere. It's just going nice stepwise motion downward to the root or, you know, the, where the, the key of the song. So we could do hours and hours more at Bach, but just wanted to get in a little bit deeper Take a, you know, deeper into some of these terms, inversion, voice leading, just very, I just, you know, thought we, sh we should do that because uh, really all Bach, the foundation of Bach's music is, is amazing. Even if you don't listen to Bach, it's, it's so cool to think all the music we listen to now, pretty much all the music can, can goes, goes back to Bach in the sense of bass lines, in the sense of chord progressions inversion chords. People do all this stuff without knowing Bach. You don't need to know Bach, but it's very cool to see this all came from hundreds of years ago, whether it's Taylor Swift, whether it's, you know, uh, The Clash or something like uh, any pop, any pop band. Um, it, it go, chord progressions, all these things. People were doing it before we looked at Monteverdi. I mean, that was, that was Renaissance music, but it wasn't, we weren't quite up to this, the, for lack of a better word, the song structure. Those were songs, you know, on a guitar and stuff, but Bach really created the structure of, uh, well, verse, chorus, perhaps, but um, it just became uh, not better, but with Bach, it really, it, everything fell into place where he, and he had no idea he was doing this. That's what's good. You just keep working and perhaps you'll change the world with your work. You just, you don't know. You just have to keep working. Okay. I think that was good, right? I mean, th that, that was a lot to chew, but uh, we're gonna have fun tomorrow. And again, happy new year, even though we're in the second week of it. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.